Welding Fixture Table Project Safe Shelves Part 1 Season 2 Episode 6 Warning! Flashing lights occurred during this video. Please use caution. The content and techniques you see in this video are performed by professionals. We ask that you do not attempt or attempt at your own risk. Thank you. What's up everybody? Chris Wonarski here. Today is a Saturday. Uh, what day is it? the August 22nd 2024 but uh what do we got here we got a little side project I'm working on for my friend Roy he uh has a coin shop and he has a safe and he has plywood shelves in there but the safe the plywood shelves are starting to break and everything so he wants something a little stronger so I'm going to use this tubing right here this is three quarter inch by I think it's like 16 gauge tubing I cut them all earlier um, on like five o'clock now I came in at like I don't know like one o'clock ish or whatever so I'm about wrapping it up I got everything cut cleaned up and prepped up ready to start welding and tacking and everything so that's so about my it. dimensions are 31 and a half by 25 inches and I need five pieces of them. So I cut them all first. At, I cut these all like a bit hair bigger, 32 inches. And then I did a 45 and a 45 after I cut them all. I cut 10 of each. So 10, 10. So I cut 10 at uh, 31 and a half or 32 inches, a hair half inch bigger. And I cut 10 at 25 and a half. I gave myself an extra half inch. And then after I cut them all straight cut at 45 and then a 45. These ones I just line up and I'll do a quick 45 on one side and then the other one I'll put a mark on and eyeball it and get it to go. And then these are my cross pieces. And after I cut them, I deburred them all, put a little bevel on there and I ground the mill scale off the edges. And then I ground the mill scale off where my cross pieces are gonna go. And that took quite a little bit of time. Not really, but I mean, it takes almost as long to cut and prep everything it almost takes longer to cut and prep everything than it does to weld everything especially if you do it the right way like if you grind the mill scale off and everything it just takes longer so but a little bit of prep work goes a long way that's what i say anyway this might just be a quick video i just want to showcase my fixturing how this fixture table is actually going to start working out so i didn't think it would work out pretty good but i got it like that that's perfect right there and I'll put my fireball shit or squares in afterwards, but all I need is just a, what do you call it? Maybe I'll put another block right there, right there, and a shim on each end, and that should be perfect length right there. Like no wiggle room right here. That should be pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Just goes to show how this table is coming in handy. I'm really liking it. We only got that like in the beginning of the year and paying off more than ever. So if you don't have those though, I highly suggest a pair of squares, either fireball squares, I think Genuine Metalworks makes them and some other companies might make them, but definitely, definitely recommend something, help you get something square and a little more accurate, a little faster. So stay tuned, I'll probably just put you on time lapse or a little video during this and speed it up, but I wasn't going to video it, but I think it might be a little interesting, so we'll see. All right, so here's my longer pieces like this, longer piece like that, and then my shorter piece and my sh shorter piece. So let's see how I want to do this. I got my shims. All right, it's still kind of a learning curve for me to use these little stopper blocks and figure out where to put them and where you want to put your clamps and everything. So just figuring it out on the way. Put it right there. So I'll take one right here because this will butt up like that. I can't put one right here I, or on the inside I might be able to but sometimes you could put the stopper blocks on the inside it all depends on where you want it and put some shims if you need to and on this case it won't work though. So I'll put it right on the outside and I might just need a shim. So let's see how it fits up. Butt it up like that Put it down, put it up, get your corners pretty good. That's pretty good. Up to the sides. And I'll just lightly push this in here. 
And that's like a nice fit up right there. It's actually really nice. It works out that these are perfectly square, so that should be, these are one inch, I think, or one inch, so that probably gives us a half inch, whatever that measurement is, came out good. That's 25 on the dot. Uh, pretty happy with that, that's what I needed. And that's 25 on the dot. Woo, that was nice. Sometimes it doesn't usually work like that, like depending on the measurement, if it's like odd or whatever. Uh, and the size, you might just have to shim it like I would have to shim over here and you'll need a couple more shims, but this is working out pretty good. And then I need 31 and a half and that's like a slight hair over, not even a 32nd, maybe a 64th. And that's like a 64th over, so that's good and plus it might just fit up even better, but I'm happy with that. And then I should just need, let's see what size shim. Maybe a one and a half inch shim might fit right in there. And that should work pretty good. Just trying to figure out different ways to shim it up. This was the easiest way, but you could see how this isn't going to work in a second. Just so this doesn't spin like this. That's the one bad thing, I guess, about a rounded thing. Uh, could spin a little, so maybe if I put two on there like this, it might hold it a little straighter if the shim's long enough for that, which it's not really. Got this piece of uh, half inch flat bar, half inch. So this should work pretty good then too. That way I only need one shim on there and then I'll just take my one inch piece, which one inch is kind of tight squeeze. But it might work. I might have to do a hair under one inch. I might have to do uh, 15 sixteenths. The shim kit, you got one thirty second of an inch up to two inches. But it's, it goes one thirty second. One sixteenth, one eighth, three sixteenths, quarter. I don't think we have five. I think we got three eighths. Then we got half. Then we got three quarter. Then one inch and two inch. Then we got four of each. But you could keep adding all of your other stuff, 3 sixteenths, 1 sixteenths. So right now I need 15 sixteenths, so I got 3 quarters, so that's 12. I need a 3 sixteenths, so 2 3 sixteenths, one for each one. So that'd be 12, 13, 14, 15. That should bring us right there. And if that's still a little bit too small, which it might be, I got a 32nd. So that'll just bring us a 32nd under one inch. And that should be perfect. Wow. That just goes to show you. I mean, I know this stuff's expensive. Those shims are like two, three hundred bucks at the time. I don't know how much they are now. But that's perfectly square. Like I don't even need to get my fireball square in there. Like I still use this a lot of times, but there's no sense to even do it really, because I, if I just clamp it all down, that's square. And we're tight in our pieces, so as long as it's touching on each end, we're good. So, I'll start clamping it down. This is one thing we need, some more clamps though. Um, they're a little pricey. We got these clamps, and then we got bigger ones. I like to have the smaller ones like this just because these kind of take up a lot of room and everything, so. And you could still do this without this table. If I didn't have the table, I would have the squares, I think. And that works perfectly fine. Nothing wrong though with that at all. We've done that for years. And we've done it without the squares for years too, but I think the squares really, really help. Especially the one thing and nice about the squares too is they're transferable. You could use those in the field. Now we got these longer ones. And we got some of these ones too. These are like those ones, but they don't click in. These were actually pretty cheap. These were on uh, Amazon for like 40 bucks for like four of them. But then we make these things. They kind of have to have a lathe to make these unless you use 5 8 round bar and you just didn't have this extra little step in here, like that. So that's up to you. 
All right, guys, that came out pretty good. I'm gonna double measure it before I do what I probably should do the cross measurement too, but. All right, my measurements are pretty good on the dot, except for that one side was like a 30 second, maybe a little less over. So I'm just gonna take it to the grinder and just trim a little bit off the end and hopefully that'll fit in pretty good. Plop it in place. We got just a little movement in there, which is okay. Put it to the one side, I'll check it with the square and I'm pretty sure we are pretty good. So now actually the one inch would actually fit in here instead of the 15 16 now. Now that's one thing I remember Fireball Tool Jason saying that like you can set up your blocks to be perfect. That way if how I was a little small and I wouldn't fit in there, how I had to do the 15 16 where if I would have just ground a little bit off of that, that should be perfect. So if it doesn't fit, then I just have to grind a little bit more off instead of switching to a different shim and that would get you to your perfect measurement so let's see now 31 and a half almost exactly and 31 and a half almost exactly maybe a 64th over but i'm happy with that i can't ask for much better than that do a little cross measurement i think we we're 40 and 3 sixteenths on each side so perfect man that's awesome I'm actually proud of that. I wasn't planning on filming this, but just how everything worked out good, it just was nice. How that worked out like that, I mean, it's nothing special, but just, this is a homemade table. I still gotta post this video of this. This is, this was a cool build. I wish there, one thing I wish we did is I just wish we put another couple more in here. And I wish we would have brought it to the edge a little bit more too. So another two inches this way on center and we would have had another extra one. But besides that, I love it. Nice three quarter inch tabletop, aluminum. So that's nice because we work on a lot of stainless steel. And then the, the pins we made ourselves, the clamps we made ourselves, which we could have bought, might have been cheaper to buy. I'm not really sure, but not bad. So, but this worked out pretty good. I'm happy with that. Besides that, if I didn't have this, I would have just did it with the fireball squares and it would have worked fine. Not bad at all, but um, that just made it good, easy, and accurate. So, we'll get to it. Start tacking. Yeah. That'd be good if I had a ground, right? All right. Can't fail you, right? All right, speed up a lot of this for you guys. Not much to it, just tacking and welding. So that's about it. And then after it's all tacked, I'm just gonna unclamp it all, move the clamps out of my way, try not to move any of those stopper blocks, pull it out, double check my measurements, make sure my measurements are on point and my cross is square, square, and hopefully that's good to go. It's actually working out pretty fast, this thing to tack all those up after I got it all set up and I'll put you on my little uh, first person view thing and I'll get you guys, I guess, a video of me doing it like this. Not a whole lot to it. Once you figure it out, it should be pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy. Just make sure you suck the piece back to those blocks and not inward and make sure it's just clamped flat down to the ground and that I was making sure the parts were the same size and just should be pretty good. If the piece doesn't fit in like that, just grind it down a little bit. If you grind it down too much you'll just have a bigger gap to fill up but just make sure you pull it back to those blocks and pull it down to the table and it should be your exact measurement pretty good fireball tool he had a good video on how simple it is to use a fixture table once you get the hang of it how like a beginner can use it and get the parts on dimension probably a good idea just to double check your measurements like i am here and also check your squares just like I am there to cross measurement make sure it's square and not much to it I'm starting to utilize these stopper blocks and everything more and seeing the benefits of it I haven't done it too much throughout the year but just seeing the benefits of it and it's even worth it for just one project three down two to go all right, now I gotta find my equal spacing. So I got three pieces that I wanna add in there. So I'm gonna divide that by four. Pretty much you just add one extra piece. So measure one side to one side, either inside or the outside. 
but just say inside to inside, just say it's 20 inches, and I want to add three pieces. I'll divide 20 divided by four, because I'll add one extra piece. So one imaginary piece. So 20 divided by four. If I wanted to add two pieces, I'd do 20 divided by three. So that works, and just keep in mind too that if you want a piece in the middle right there, that will not always happen if you do it this way because your measurements might not be exactly how it is. So if you want a piece in the middle, measure the middle of that, put your piece in the middle, then measure the distance in between the one end to the middle and the other end to the middle and find the center of those and that should work out like now that. I'm going to start tacking these inside pieces. Um, this really doesn't matter. I'm just going to do it with the square. I could have did it with the shims too, or the things too, but I don't really feel like doing that. So I clamp each corner down and then I'll just put the square in and I don't I don't think it'll work for all of them. It might only work for one. But anyway, I got my lines fit up. It's not a big deal if it's off a hair. So we're pretty good though. But my lines should be pretty good and should be good. Alright guys, uh 640, that's what time it is right now. And we're all done tacking everything up. The only thing I got left to do is just put a little bevel on that, on all of them. And then they're ready to weld. But uh, I'm getting kind of hungry, but I want to finish this today. I don't really want to come back even if I got to stay for another hour. I just don't want to, I'm already here. I got nothing else to do It's Saturday. I got nothing to do tomorrow, so. Um, I don't mind staying, I'm just getting hungry. So I could do a late night if I want. Yeah, munchos, munchos are a little better than the cheese doodles, I think. That might hold me over for another hour to get those done. Scarf them down really fast and then I'll get to it. Well, took one to the grinder, I'll probably just do one each time I'm done, but what I do to the thing is I just knock a little 45 degree edge on there and just round it a little bit. Not really round it, but put deburr it and stuff. And once you put that little weld on, then you could grind it down to your nice corner like that. And you got that weld material on there. It's just good. Start welding it right now. I like to weld the corners like that. And I'll usually use the pulser when I weld that. Then I'll clamp it down, weld the sides on like that. Flip it over, weld the other sides, and then I'll weld the inside corners last. ready to wrap up that was a long day that was uh i got here about 12 so eight and a half hours almost i stopped for lunch and a little bit but um took a little while i mean i probably could have did things a little different and whatever and talking to the camera took a little longer too so it's all on my free time it doesn't really matter if it took up a little longer time so that was it we got five pieces and i actually welded all the way around um, got a little, little warpage just because the welds up here too. I mean, it might be, have a little wobble in it, but, um, the welds are making it wobble right now. So, anyway, if it wobbles a little bit, it's not a huge deal. But, it shouldn't. So, 31 and a half, 31 and a half, 25 exact. We're like right on measurement. Man, that came out good. And if it lo wobbles a little, I think it's so thin that I can tweak it a little. So we should be able to get it flat, but we'll see after it's done grinding. So 31 and a half and 25, that's my measurements. So we're good on that. And that's it. These I'll grind down. I'm not going to grind them down tonight. So maybe Monday or one day next week or something. So I got to grind them down. That should be pretty easy though. Maybe an hour tops. And then I got to put my piece of plywood or it's like a little masonite wood I want to put on top because it's trying to make a cost effective for him but I think that might be perfect and it slides nice so he could slide low trays and stuff inside good but if I'm only going to put one piece on 
and see if he likes that. And if he doesn't like that, I think we'll do aluminum plate on top because I think the steel plate might be too heavy. So we'll see. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, if you have any other ideas how you would have done it, let me know. I don't think I'll show you the final product, maybe on Instagram, or I don't know if I'll tie that into another video or what I'm gonna do. So my plan was just to try making some shelves. I didn't really know what was the best idea. He has like the little, it's almost like a safe, if you know, like a gun safe or something that has like a little L brackets, like four of them on each corner. And then the thing just comes and sits on. He had pieces of plywood and over time they were sagging and everything. And no matter how uh, thick of plywood you would have done, I think over time it still would have sagged a little and whatever. And then you would have had to go up to three quarter of an inch to one inch, which this is three quarter two. But I think this is just the stronger option. That's what I was kind of testing. Like you could take it from here to here. And it's like strong, but that's not really a good test. Then I put a couple pieces. I don't know if I would have needed a cross piece this way, but I didn't really know if any other good ideas. I mean, I could have probably did angle and just did angle and plopped a piece of wood in top. Uh, I'm not really sure. I was gonna do half inch uh, square tubing at first, but I grabbed a piece of half inch up there and it still felt a little flimsy for about that size. So I didn't really want any flimsiness in there because he puts a lot of weight in there and just wasn't really sure. So I just a little trial and error and only into it for a hundred dollars plus my time, which whatever. And that's about it. So maybe 200, 150 after time and material and stuff for material, whatever. But um, that's about it. So that's it. And yeah, not sure enough. what I'll add or not add in this video. It was only supposed to be a quick little video to show you how to use that table. And then I started to get carried away showing you the time lapse and stuff. So I'm not sure what I'll add in and what I won't. Maybe it'll be one video or two videos. Not really sure, but that's it. Chris Winarski, over and out. And we are signing out at 8.30. And we are pretty dark out here. All right, I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna stop, eat something on my way home and make a coffee before I leave. And that's it. See you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like, dislike, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Instagram where I post more often at Chris Wynarski. See you on the next one.